Another year has come and gone, and in the process, many new discoveries and developments were made in the biological sciences. Now, I was exceptionally busy this year, and I barely had time to work on news segments or main episodes, which is why, unfortunately, I was only able to report on 39 news stories, and most of those were when I had just a little bit of free time at the very, very end of the year. There were tons of things that I was also planning on getting around to reporting, but I, just, I never had the time to, to finish the news stories. Okay, so let's go over the biological science news from 2021, both the stories that I reported here on the show and the stories that I didn't, but I still want you to know about. As is traditional at this point, let's begin with a look at the developments in healthcare and medicine. In an important discovery, researchers found that lipophilic statins posed a critical risk for dementia in some patient populations. A drug typically used as a protein aggregation inhibitor was found to have robust anti-cancer properties. In an exciting study, a gene therapy treatment applied to one eye was able to have beneficial effects in both eyes, suggesting a new mechanism for drug treatments. Phase 3 clinical trials for a malaria vaccine have begun in Mali. And a report on the effects of Oregon's 2014 Medicaid expansion was published this year, noting that, among many other beneficial outcomes, the policy led to improved health outcomes for new mothers, newborns, and young children. New medical developments include a complex biomonitor skin patch that's soft and stretchy and much more comfortable. It was discovered that 509 genes were linked to depression and anxiety. An amputee patient was able to achieve thought-based control over the individual fingers of a super-advanced prosthetic arm with neural implants. Human-animal hybrids, or chimeras, have been achieved with both human pig and human monkey chimeras, in the form of short-lived artificial embryos or organoids, and some bioethicists are pulling the brakes. A study provided unprecedented details on the last-resort antibiotic colistin and how it kills bacteria, and the largest study of tuberculosis ever identifies its genetic basis for drug resistance. Unfortunately, we're also seeing a rise in mucormycosis, or black fungus infections in India. More research evidence suggests that additives in plastic have harmful effects on the brain development of infants and children. Other endocrine disruptors found in brominated flame retardants used in furniture and appliances were linked to breast cancer. A study identified a link between the geographic distribution of environmental chemicals such as endocrine disruptors and plastics and declines in semen quality and increases in testicular cancer seen in both humans and dogs. A study of microplastics and feces identified a significant positive correlation with inflammatory bowel disease, and a flesh-eating disease that causes painful, often disfiguring ulcers saw an explosion of cases in Australia. In terms of the environment, pollution, and human impact, it was discovered that cow rumen contains microbe species capable of degrading at least three commonly used types of plastic. Microbes and even some animals are evolving enzymes to break down plastic in places all over the world. And commercial meat, which I really hope will become a strong contender against traditional meat production, took another step forward with the opening of the first commercial production facility. But evidence shows that cultured meat faces consumer hesitation, suggesting that more education is needed to spread awareness of its benefits. A new biodegradable plastic has been made from DNA and hands-on gardens in elementary schools can encourage kids to eat more vegetables. A new method of non-invasive environmental DNA sampling has been developed. Scientists in Japan have uh, identified certain species of ground snakes as a potentially useful biomonitor for radiation levels in Fukushima. A common insecticide has been linked to the collapse of freshwater insect populations, and research shows that pesticides generally are causing terrible damage to soil biomes and worms, insects, and spiders living there. A study identified massive losses in the ecologically valuable seagrass meadows surrounding the United Kingdom. And this is an unfortunate pairing of a, uh, a previous study I did some years ago about the destruction of the important prairie meadow ecologies in the United Kingdom. Another study identified the loss of a third of the topsoil in America's Corn Belt, and another study finds that 97% of the Earth's surface is no longer ecologically intact, in the sense that multiple local plant and animal species have been wiped out. And lastly, one of the worst individual environmental disasters in decades has occurred off the coast of Sri Lanka, 
as a cargo ship exploded and burned, leaking who knows how many tons of nitric acid, bunker oil, and gasoline into the water. And on other human-related topics, there's been some polling research to indicate that, for the first time ever, a majority of Americans accept evolution as fact. And the demographics behind this shift may surprise you. Also, the author of The Diversity of Life, the famous and massively influential sociobiologist E.O. Wilson, also known as the Ant-Man for his groundbreaking work with ants, has passed away at the age of 92. In the world of animal science, researchers analyzing the composition of very deadly spider venom have identified a chemical that may have tremendous medical value. And the deadly conotoxin derived from cone snails may have therapeutic effects against malaria. An incredible little study has found that jumping spiders may be capable of subtle cognitive abilities that we typically only see in larger, smarter vertebrate animals. A study identified the fascinating and surprising ways in which small, toxic frogs can survive their own poisons. A review of behavioral research on giraffes has found compelling evidence of complex sociality, rivaling that seen in elephants and even primates. And a study explored the strange ways in which some species of sea slugs are able to integrate chloroplasts from their algae diet into their tissues, turning themselves into photosynthetic animals. A study found that a quarter of all known bee species haven't been seen since the 1990s. But on the bright side, a small area in the Arizona desert is home to 500 species of bee, representing the highest density of bee biodiversity in the world. A study examined a case of superparasitism, where micro-wasps had infected some larger wasps, which in turn had infected butterflies. A study into the wildlife trade found that it's a major driver of species loss. A new species of whale has been discovered, the Ramari's beaked whale, which is one of the deepest diving sea mammals in the world. And a new species of chameleon discovered in the forests of northern Madagascar is the smallest reptile in the world, at about three quarters of an inch in length. An exotic, terrifying creature pulled from the South Pacific has eight arms and eight mouths, and was studied in great detail this year. Deep-sea hydrothermal vent-dwelling microbe communities include a surprisingly destructive niche of protist predators. Fish waste was shown to have an extremely important role in marine carbon cycling. Heat waves in the western U.S. were extremely harmful to shallow water marine environments, including mass die-offs of shellfish, bivalves, mussels, and even larger fish like salmon, which have been suffering heat lesions, fungal infections, and mass die-offs in the affected rivers. And a study found that freshwater fish in general are facing catastrophic declines, with one-third at risk of extinction. In the world of plants and all things that grow in the soil, a study on chemical signaling in tomato plants discovered an electrical signal sent from tomato fruit to the rest of the plant could initiate a defensive strategy against herbivores. And a study identified some genes that could be edited to massively improve plant growth and crop yields. There was a lot more that went on in 2021 uh, regarding plants and things that grow in the soil. But unfortunately, I just I didn't read a lot of them. I didn't record a lot of them. Um, I didn't study a lot of them. And when I organized all of my news stories at the end of the year uh, by these categories, I found that I had just, just two science news stories uh, involving plants. Um, I'll try and fix this, and next year I'll try and do more stories involving plants and flowers and seeds and crops and all that stuff. All the stuff involving things that grow in the soil. New insights into evolutionary history include the discovery of a massive 8.6-foot-long, 326-million-year-old fossilized millipede that is perhaps the largest bug that ever lived. A study identified basal genes for the immune system and sensory organs preserved across 555 million years of evolutionary history. A stunningly well-preserved dinosaur egg suggests that dinosaurs could live year-round near the North Pole. A fascinating study analyzed pterosaur flight patterns as they changed during the transition from youth to maturity. A 246-million-year-old, eight-foot-long ichthyosaur skull was found, which is arguably the largest single fossil from this time period, and suggesting a massive 55-foot-long ichthyosaur. And research on the dinosaur-killing asteroid impact found that soot would have rapidly blanketed the Earth, 
and blocked sunlight for months, if not years, collapsing ecosystems and contributing to the mass species extinction. Another study found that the KT impact led to a rapid increase in the dietary complexity and prey diversity of snakes, and another study explored the evolutionary origins and the spread of the famous Komodo dragon. In more recent evolutionary history, 1.2 million-year-old mammoth DNA was extracted from preserved remains and even sequenced. A study analyzed DNA that was extracted from cave mud in the Caucasus region, which gave clues into the genetics of Paleolithic bison, wolves, and human beings. Two extremely well-preserved cave lion cubs from the Siberian permafrost have been analyzed. Archaeologists have identified the oldest known incidence of human use of tobacco, and it is uh, surprisingly old. Uh, but all of this is nothing compared to the 890 million year old fossil that could be the oldest sponge and the oldest animal ever found. But that pales in comparison to the 3.42 billion year old fossils that could likely represent the oldest known archaea ever discovered. And in the ever-ongoing search for life in the cosmos, 2021 did not disappoint. NASA's Perseverance rover has landed at Jezero Crater and has begun its search for life. Some of the follow-up research got published regarding the phosphine signal detected on Venus last year. And this is, actually, this is a good one, so you should definitely check it out if you haven't. If you like the debunking angle or the little-to-no-life-in-the-cosmos perspective, you might enjoy a study on sterile Antarctic soil that implies a hard environmental limit for life elsewhere in the universe. Also, scientists studied the surface of Europa to seek clues for alien life and methods to detect them in alien environments. A fungal experiment on the ISS was super promising, informing the feasibility of a fungal-based radiation shield for spacecraft. An impact experiment with tardigrades identifies potential physical limits for the panspermia process, and a study found evidence suggesting that the number of Earth-sized planets in the universe may be vastly underestimated due to their unexpected presence in the orbit of binary star systems. A little closer to home, there was a study that found that cyanobacteria may be able to grow on Mars. Another study found that Mars's subsurface environment might be more tolerable for life than the radiation-exposed surface. And NASA plans to study Venus to learn more about its history and its potential for life both in the past and today. There have also been major efforts this year to scan the cosmos for signs of alien technology, often called megastructures, and experts are developing a framework for identifying and reporting evidence of alien life. Alright, so that was just a taste of the biological science news from 2021. Now it's time to pick my favorite stories. As always, these are the stories that I found to be either the most exciting, or interesting, or the most impactful in terms of research paradigms, medical or technological breakthroughs, and political consequences. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic was the number one news story of 2020, and it obviously kept going throughout 2021. But I decided to choose non-COVID stories, because we're all just so saturated with COVID stuff at this point. Now, on this note, I'll be honest. The top stories, they did kind of jump out at me, but it was really hard to rank them. They all seem really serious and important. There was a lot of big discoveries and developments, including many that are really important, either medically or in the context of pollution or climate change. So I tried to bundle up multiple stories about a larger phenomenon. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so that being said, the honorable mention for 2021 is the Human Animal Chimera Research. This subject was selected because it's just so wild. The very concept of chimeral organoids or embryos or tissues built with, you know, the integrated cells of two or more species, this is straight out of science fiction. It's wicked awesome. But, and this is also really important, it's a source of great bioethical disagreement. On one hand, there are people who don't see too much of an ethical issue with chimeras. They don't see a fundamental ethical issue with simply, uh, in theory, combining human and animal tissues. Instead, they see these uh, chimera organoids and chimera embryos as invaluable cutting-edge tools for studying diseases and animal development and researching drugs that could benefit millions of people. But on the other hand, you have uh, some bioethical arguments against it. 
You have the, the usual ethical arguments that are made about using human cells and where they were originally sourced from and how they will be used or treated during the experiments. That's all pretty standard boilerplate stuff. But uh, more unique to this particular field, this particular research focus, is the possible bioethical consequences of developing things like chimera brain organoids or neural networks. And this brings up questions of consciousness, awareness, perception, sensation, and suffering. How far along the developmental pathway can a brain organoid, for example, be allowed to grow before we seriously start to suspect that it houses a sapient consciousness, and all of our tests and experiments are causing it to suffer in some capacity? Even worse than this, when you talk about chimera embryos, you have to wonder how far along the developmental pathway can you take this chimera embryo before we start to think that there's a consciousness in there, before we start to think that, okay, we can't treat this like cells in a plate, we have to treat this like an aware animal at this point. And further still, if you have a, uh, a combined human pig or human primate chimera, or some, uh, for example, say you gestate that embryo and bring it all the way to term so that you now have a small juvenile chimera organism, I mean, that on its own would be an incredible scientific achievement, but it would also be, and for good reason, extremely controversial and arguably unethical because you've just created a human being in a lab who's not really a human being. They have human cells, human genes, but to the extent that you've integrated them with some other animal, like a, a primate or a pig, they are a strange experimental chimera that could suffer who knows how many health complications, that could suffer in who knows how many different or unforeseen ways. Basically, I'm trying to say that the development of these chimera organoids and chimera embryos is a really groundbreaking achievement scientifically, and it could have great medical importance, and it could lead to the development of a lot of drugs and stuff. This, this could be a very valuable, powerful technology. But these ethical concerns, I think, are definitely valid. I think the bioethicists make a very strong argument that if you're going to grow chimera human-animal embryos, you really can't allow them to come to term, or anything even close to that because uh, the ethical implications are just, uh, they're just awful. If you're having trouble seeing the bioethical problem here, just imagine if we grew people in a lab and then kept them in the lab to perform experiments and conduct research on them. This is so unethical, it's like something straight out of sci-fi horror. And this whole field uh, got an honorable mention because this field, the medical implications, and these bioethical questions are very quickly becoming relevant. Now, the third place story of 2021 goes to widespread animal declines that have been documented across the world. In the past, we've seen evidence build of the devastating effects of pesticides and insecticides on the many arthropods in our environment. All manner of pollinating insects, like bees, are being harmed or killed by the pesticides that coat crop plants, and that are carried by the wind to coat other wild plants. The countless invertebrates in the soil are also harmed, and this has damaging effects on geochemical cycling, like carbon cycling in the soil. Overall, the loss of arthropod abundance and biodiversity is hugely damaging for plants that rely on them symbiotically, like for pollination, and for the animals that feed on them, like birds, small fish, and other insectivores. Combine this with climate change, like heat waves, and we're seeing massive die-offs of marine life along affected coastlines, and in lakes and rivers that are so hot Fish larvae are malformed or die off completely, and adults suffer heat lesions and opportunistic fungal infections. This is all part of the anthropogenic extinction, the sixth mass extinction in Earth's history. And we, human beings, are the cause of it. The second place story of 2021 goes to the microplastic contamination crisis, which is evident across multiple lines of evidence, from environmental degradation, to microplastic buildup in animals across the food web, to the endocrine-disrupting effects of microplastics in humans manifesting in behavioral and developmental disorders, and even lowered sperm count and sperm quality. This is a colossal, catastrophic problem, and it affects all levels of the biosphere. All regions on the planet, all biomes, all habitats are polluted, from deep-sea trenches to the peaks of mountains, and virtually all species in between, are impacted. This is perhaps the most biosphere-defining problem that the human species has ever before experienced, and I think we're just scraping the tip of the iceberg here. 
What we've uncovered so far about the effects of microplastics on cells and organisms, about additives on development and endocrine function, I think it's just the beginning. There's going to be lifelong effects, multi-generational effects, of this contamination in humans, and I can only guess at the incomprehensible scale of ecological and habitat degradation. However, there is a silver lining. Other news stories I covered showed evidence that various organisms, mostly microbes, are evolving ways to break down and consume different types of plastic, perhaps ameliorating some of the impact, and offering a long-term solution. There's a lot more research and development left to go here, and the problem is decades, if not centuries away from being solved in any meaningful sense. But we have to start now, with what we have. Honestly, I would have put this story as the number one slot in 2021, but really, it goes beyond 2021. This is a long-term problem. So with that said, the first play story of 2021, something that is a great achievement that we can definitely mark on our calendars happened in this year, is the phase three clinical trials for a malaria vaccine being unrolled in Africa, uh, in the country of Mali. This is a hugely important story in many ways. Biologically, it represents a major medical achievement, as malaria has been extremely challenging to fight against, therapeutically speaking. It's also a humanitarian achievement of the highest order, because malaria is historically one of, if not the worst diseases on the planet. It's killed more humans than perhaps any other uh, microbe in our history. The only one that comes close, that might offer some competition to malaria, is tuberculosis. Anyway, if these uh, malaria vaccine trials give positive results, and this malaria vaccine actually makes it to market, it's going to save millions of lives, mostly children. It'll lower the child mortality rate in Africa significantly, and it may offer an opportunity for development and economic transformation in these regions that nothing before has been able to provide. In this sense, this, uh, this malaria vaccine, if these results from these phase three clinical trials roll out and, and they're positive, if, it, if it's effective, this could be world changing in a really amazing, beneficial, humanitarian way. And that's awesome. There's your science news of 2021 year in review. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're looking forward to the next year. And as always, thanks for listening. <laughs>